evening ambassadors this is Demet elder demetrius coming forth again with part two of our message the kingdom keys to dominating your circumstances um we're so excited to be able to uh start this part two uh so much that we wanted to get into last time but we're going to let it flow today and we're so super excited to impart that knowledge today so before we do so let's recap really quickly on what we discussed so we can get right into it so with that being said we were talking about how we could dominate our circumstances and how important it is for ambassadors to be able to uh, get the uh, the soul in line get it subjected to the word learn the word learn how to hear the voice of the holy spirit learn how to fellowship with the holy spirit and as a result of that our deeds will be righteous just as the father says i am righteous so you should be righteous he is holy so you should be holy so as ambassadors we have to make sure uh because the question that we posed on the last teaching was that how long was it that you were you were uh, listening out of that soulish realm and so why is, why is that important because we have to understand when we became uh born again believers when we become ambassadors kingdom citizens of the kingdom of heaven you have to understand how long were we dealing with that soul? How long were we dealing, listening, being subjected to our souls and not the spirit? So when we come into the knowledge of the truth, when we came into citizenship, we have to think the way the father's thinking. So we posed a question last go around. And that question was that, how long have you been listening and digesting from your soul? So with that being said, we looked at the three part trichotomy of man. And I'm just going over there because this is going to lay our foundation going forward. Uh, three part trichotomy of man. Uh, man is consisted of three primary uh, components. That's the spirit. That's the soul. And that's the body. OK. We dealt with the soul on the last go round, and that soul consists of that mind, the will and the emotions. OK, so the thoughts that we think. What have we accepted as true? Also, what choices are we making? Are we making them out of the soul? Are we making them out of the body, out of the flesh? Or are we are we making them out of the spirit? And then lastly, the emotions. So uh, before we get to the spirit, we, we left off on the emotions. So we're going to look at a few things that's hindering us because we understand that emotions are chemicals. So if you let chemicals govern your life, then you're going to be subjected to chemicals, emotions. And we gave an example, offense. Offense is governed by emotions. When someone offends us, we start to get emotional. And that emotion, that trauma, that circumstance, that obstacle that's between us and overcoming it uh, was our emotions. We became, we let our emotions become our mediator. The emotions told us what to do. The emotions had access to us, uh, to our thoughts. And we operated out of those, but no longer will we do that. And ambassadors, if you're doing that, it's time to shub, uh, change the way that we think. That's the Hebrew word for repent. We have to acknowledge it and we have to turn away from it. We have to walk away from those things that are dominating us. OK, so let's get right into the emotional realm. And uh, again, that three part trichotomy of man was the spirit, the soul and the body. OK, we can definitely deal with that body because <laughs> that's what's governing people nowadays uh but that's not our topic today so we talked about emotions um and we're going into this so emotions are chemicals okay emotions come from the arousal of the nervous system and chemical reactions occur because of synapse and those are um those are uh, new neurons that sends and transmits to our brain to let us know that something's not right or something is is something is happening and it's causing this body to do something else. So when we talk about being governed by emotions, we're talking about um, being governed by these chemicals. So let's get into some of those chemicals that um, are dominating or controlling the minds of people that have not identified the purpose of the spirit and how to tap into the spirit. That's what we want to get to today. So we are. OK, let's go. So the four primary internal chemicals sent to our brain. And we talked about this last go around. That's dopamine. That's oxytocin. 
that's serotonin and endorphins. These are four primary internal chemicals uh, and, and which governs emotions that are sent to the brain. And so why are we going into this? Why are we dissecting these? Well, we dissecting these things because you need to know and identify the, the chemicals that are uh, allowing you to be governed by your emotions. That's why we have to go into it. We have to take every thought captive. It's a scripture. We have to take every thought captive. We have to trace it down to the source. This is what we're doing. And we have to subject it to the word. We have to make sure it's light or darkness. There's no in-between area. It's never been an in-between area. The father doesn't operate in between. He doesn't operate in mess. <laughs> you hear some people telling people, Elohim will bless you with your mess. And that is incorrect. He will not do that. So if you're thinking that, then you are governed by emotions. You're governed by someone else's thoughts because that is not the word of Elohim. He never told us that he would bless us in a mess. That's not scriptural. That's not from the father. So, okay. Going into that, we're going to go into those. So manage your emotions or they will manage you. Your emotions are managing you and it's causing you to not hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. And when we come into an obstacle, when we come into a circumstance that we see, we are dominated because we are operating out of the soulish man. We're listening to the soulish man. And the soulish man is telling us and directing us to go into the wrong areas. And so these are four chemicals that we're going to go into. Let's go into them. Uh, the first one is dopamine. Well, before we go there, the scripture uh, Galatians 5 says, But I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit. And the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. They are fighting against each other. And if you are governed by emotions, then you are letting the flesh overpower the spirit. The spirit is in the perfect will of the father. It's perfect. It doesn't need to be fine tuned. It doesn't need to be recalibrated. It's perfect will of the father. And that is trying to override this soulish man. But we got to give it access. So. Again, let's go into these four primary internal chemicals. Dopamine. Dopamine is one of those chemicals. And we can give an example. Social media. And this is honestly, this is how marketing companies are making billions and billions and trillions of dollars because they are they have identified what can cause this chemical to overtake your mind and steal your time. Time is a kingdom currency. The father sits in eternity, which means unending time. And he placed us in the earth and we're governed by time. So we have to make sure that we spend our time doing the things of the father and not pl uh, pleasing the emotional realm, the soul. And so dopamine is a chemical messenger and it's linked to rewards, motivation, memory and attention functions of the body and plays a role in regulating body movements. And then Healthline reports say when dopamine is released in large amounts, it creates feelings of pleasure and reward, which motivates you to repeat a specific behavior. It motivates you to repeat a specific behavior. What's the first thing you do when you get up in the morning? Majority of people are getting up and they grabbing. They are grabbing their cellular device. They're grabbing their phone and they're checking. They're scrolling through uh, what we call news feed on social media. We're scrolling and we're scrolling and we're scrolling. We see things that may uh, entice us or make us click something else. And so what is happening here is you're getting a pleasure and you keep doing it because you get this particular pleasure. It makes you feel good and it's governing you and it's governing you mismanaging your time. And so when we go on these social media platforms and we start to um, look into things and spend a majority of our time into it, then it releases this chemical. Those neurons are sending signals to the brain saying this feels good. I, I like this. And let's continue to do it. Let's continue to keep doing it because it makes me feel good. And to, in today's society, that's the synopsis of what people are telling us to do. Uh, they are creating their own belief system, their own way of life and lifestyles. 
and they are telling people to do what you feel. Make it, you know, whatever makes you feel good, you should just do it. You should just do it. Don't care what nobody else thinks. You be you. You you do what makes you feel good. And these are things that happen when they feel good, like this dopamine chemical, then you continue to do it. And you think there's nothing wrong with it. Well, I'm just on there, you know, 30 minutes, uh, 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 two hours, three hours a day. Uh, that's not a lot of time. What could we have utilized that time on? Because the Father gives everybody the same 24 hours in a day. So what are we utilizing that time on? Wherever we spend our time, it's going to be a result of what influences us. So if we spend time in the spirit, listening to the spirit, then the spirit can influence us to operate and appropriate the benefits of being a kingdom citizen. So are you going to let dopamine uh, lead and guide you? Chemicals? Or are you going to let the spirit lead and guide you? So let's go on to some more. So dopamine is it's kind of like a drug sense. It's just like when people have drugs and they, they get addicted to it. it. This is the same chemical. This is the same chemical that's released in their minds of pleasure. And they continue to do that action because it makes them feel good. So do you get the connection now? Okay, let's go down to oxytocin. Oxytocin is a hormone produced by the hemolamus and secreted or secreted by the pictorial gland. This important hormone plays a crucial role in the childbirth process and also helps with male reproduction. The Hormone Health Network reports that stu uh, studies of oxytocin also have found that it is, an, it is an important chemical messenger that controls some human behaviors and social interactions. It is oxytocin that triggers the bond between a mother and an infant. And it may be also play a role in recognition, sexual arousal, trust, and anxiety. So this is another hormone. And, and I believe this is the hormone that between dopamine and oxytocin, these are the ones that uh, are governing a lot of people uh, in the earth. Uh, they get pleasure from sexual arousal pleasures because this is the society that we live in, sex sales. It's all about showing everything. It's all about... Um, how it makes you feel, um, not even in negating the covenant laws that the father established to govern a nation. You're, you're running against the law. You, you're a lawbreaker. <laughs> it's just that simple. And so this is also a chemical that is used with, in childbirth. And this is uh, when me and my wife had my had our daughter. This is the chemical that they were trying to release to create uh, in the mind, the uh, against the pain, the, the neuron sending uh, signals to the brain saying you're in pain versus them sending oxytocin to the brain saying that everything's fine. You'll get pleasure from this. You can um, can uh, do childbirth without the, the, the pain that that's uh, attached to it. And so um, this is one of those chemicals. All right. Let's go on to this third chemical, serotonin. The chemical serotonin has various roles in the human body. It is often termed the happy chemical because of its direct effect on well-being and happiness. It plays a vital role in regulating mood balance. Low serotonin levels have been linked to depression. These are another this is another chemical that's governed the minds of people. People go into depression because they have not identified purpose. When we identify purpose and when we identify our rights as kingdom citizens, our mindset changes. We're not governed by these. These are things that are sent to the body. True enough. And I'm and I'm sure the father created these things to do that. But again, the key concepts of all of this is to not let it dictate you, not let it hinder you from hearing from the Holy Spirit and not hindering you from operating as a kingdom ambassador in the earth. This is why we have to look at these things. We have to identify them so that we can uproot them and we can place the word in and let it govern our lives. OK, and this last one, because we want to get to this spirit, the word endorphin combines two words, indigenous, meaning inside the body and morphine, a medication that relieves pain. This powerful chemical is your body's natural painkiller. 
endorphins are linked less to runners high now that uh, endocannabinoids but are connected to the feeling no pain aspect of aerobic exercise okay so with this being said endorphin is a chemical that is sent into our bodies to again uh, create a natural painkiller so we won't feel uh, pain in whatever particular area same thing I, I think it goes along with adrenaline it creates this chemical that and it, it's it released inside of the body eternal that causes you not to feel something that's going on at a particular time the brain is saying hey we may be facing something we may have been hit this body may have been hindered but i'm focusing on getting you away from this problem getting you away from the issue first and then we can um address that issue so these are four main chemicals again important to know emotions are chemicals let's not be governed by those okay all right so with that being said let's go into the spirit this is what we've been trying to get to and so let's look at that three functions of your spirit three functions of your spirit there there are more functions of your spirit these are the three that the scripture talks about but it it goes in depth and as ambassadors we want to get the full picture because we want to make sure that we operating out of the spirit and not out of soul okay so those three functions again it's more of them but we're going to focus on these three we got to build our foundation the conscious fellowship and intuition ambassadors we are kingdom citizens now now it's time to study to show yourself approved to study to hear to allow the holy spirit to he uh to talk and teach us and guide us and direct us so that we can operate in the kingdom now we're talking about overcoming circumstances okay and so when we look at circumstances matter of fact let's go to that word because i mentioned this last time but we want to uh give you a visual of it let's go to that word the hebrew word for circumstance this is powerful is a dan remember I, I referenced this on the last one but i want to show it to you so we can see it uh that hebrew word a dan is a hebrew word for circumstance and what's interesting is this is the same hebrew word for time okay the hebrew word for time and circumstances is the same word hmm something to think about so let's dissect that word because we need to see in the eyes of the spirit what is the father seeing when we when he sees a circumstance versus what is the soul seeing what is the body seeing when we see a circumstance most of the time in our bodies and our souls we see a circumstance and we think it's an obstacle that's hindering us that we may or may not be able to overcome and so this is important for ambassadors to change your viewpoint we have to change our viewpoint and see with the spirit the spiritual eyes being able to see what the father has already deemed in his word that we can conquer that we can overcome and so with that being said let's go into the dan and it's the uh comprised of the hebrew aleph bet a yin dalet and noon and what's important about the hebrew aleph bet is that every hebrew aleph bet letter is spelled with the word so we're going to try to break those down so we can get the full meaning of what it means and so ayin is to see or to experience or to acknowledge and the hebrew olivets that comprise to create this uh, letter is ayin yud noon and that yud is telling us that it's some authority uh, of the father of the spirit of the father and that noon and we see that noon down here already is life springing forward it's, it's an indentation of a seed of life or activity and we can even go even deeper in just a second on the spelling of noon so what are we seeing we seeing the spiritual power of the father that brings life that's that's just from the end so we haven't got the full picture just yet and then that dalet dalet lamed tab dalet is access to the kingdom it's a pathway for access to something that lamed is telling us that it's some 
it's um, some teaching needs to be done, some education um, from that. And then Tob is that covenant that's established by the father. So when we see the dollar, we're getting access to the power of the kingdom by way of the covenant that the father established in the beginning. And then noon, that noon is given us that life is spelled noon, vav, noon. And that vav is uh, to connect, to establish. And it gives us a pictorial meaning. So a picture of a nail connecting two things together. And so what we see here is you see an obstacle. You see something that you may or may not be able to overcome. But the father is seeing a seeing a circumstance where well, you see a circumstance. The father is seeing an opportunity for you to experience life through the covenant that was established by the kingdom of heaven. You have to switch your viewpoint. So next time you see an obstacle or, or something comes up for you or something trying to hinder hinder you, then you see it as an experience. You see it as an opportunity to experience the good pleasure of the father, how he leads and guides us, how he has given us the ability to overcome those things that are trying to overcome us. He has given us the ability to call those things out, to uproot some things. He's given us the authority in the earth. He gave us the authority in the earth to conquer whatever it is. Some people are facing cancer. You have the ability, the uh, immune system and the things in the, in the blood and everything inside of your body that's causing this disease can be healed by way of you acknowledging your citizenship with the kingdom. And you're saying, hey, this is not a part of this body. Therefore, if it's not any good for me, because the father is out there good for my life, then it has to come up. It has to come out of my belief system. I don't call it my cancer. I don't call it my disease. I don't call it my sickness because it's not mine. It, it's not supposed to be there in the first place. So we have to uproot it, change our viewpoint, and see through the eyes of the spirit. That's what we have to do. Okay. All right. So with that being said, we're going right into the spirit. Again, those three functions of your spirit are the conscious fellowship and intuition. Okay. All right. Let's get into the nitty gritty. This is what we've been waiting on. Let's go into conscious. And I want to give you some scriptures and then we're going to dissect some of these scriptures. The conscious the thoughts of the spirit. We have a conscious and a subconscious. Okay. That conscious is what you've been listening to. That's the soul. The soul man is telling you to do something. The soul man saying, maybe I'm, I don't have the ability to do this. The soul is saying, I don't have the knowledge to do this. The soul is saying all of these things. And the spirit is saying, what did the word say? What have I already deemed in my word? Okay. So let's look at some scriptures. So Romeo 91 is telling us, sure was talking, said, I am telling the truth. No, that's not sure. I am telling the truth in Messiah in Yeshua. I am not lying. My conscience bears witness to me and the Holy Spirit. What's important for us to understand is that, that the scripture talks about two different consciences. And what we have to understand also is that we have to look at it in the eyes of the father and make sure that we understand it. The spirit has conscious. We even have a conscious in our soul. So if we've been listening to the primary uh, our conscious from our soul and not the spirit, we have to decipher which which is what. So in this particular scripture, it's not saying that. It's not the conscious bears witness to me in the Holy Spirit. Which conscious are we talking about? OK. So this is what we have to get into developing that conscious that it, it conforms to the holy spirit let's get another one and uh messiah or acts 24 and 16 and herein do i exercise myself to have always a conscious void of offense toward elohim and toward men which conscious are we talking about here well the spirit is in perfect line and perfect alignment with the father the spirit is encompasses all that the father is correct so it doesn't remember we said this. It doesn't need to be fine tuned. It doesn't need to be recalibrated. It doesn't need to be uh, reconfigured because it's already in perfect likeness and image of the father. So in this particular scripture, it's telling us that we have to allow that conscious, that soulish man to be void of offense. 
because the offense comes in on the soulless rim. It comes in on that belief system and those emotions. When you're offended by somebody, your spirit is not offended. That's your soul man being offended. And you have to make sure that you're seeing it through the eyes of the spirit. So when we dissecting, rightly dividing the word of truth, we have to understand which conscience or which part of what is the father talking about. And avoid offense toward Elohim and toward men. Okay. The spirit would never be an offense of the father because it is him. Okay. So it makes sense now. And then let's look at Titus on to the pure. All things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving, nothing's pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. Again, this is not talking about the spirit. The spirit can't be defiled because the spirit is in the likeness and image of the father. The reason I'm saying this is because we have to decipher the thoughts. Again, taking it captive. We have to understand if it's from the spirit or from the soul, if it's from the soul, because we continually to renew our minds, the scripture tells us to renew our minds daily as a result. So we can rightly divide the word of truth so that we can decipher through the spirit. If it's light or darkness, then we can download it into our belief system. It's, it's a continuous process. And so uh, the spirit can't be defiled. Lastly, Hebrew or Hebrews 9, 14. How much more shall the blood of Yeshua or the Messiah who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to Elohim purge a conscience from dead works to serve the living El? Purge a conscience. Which conscience are we talking about? <laughs> We're talking about the soul man, the, the thoughts that the soul man thinks. We have to purge them. That means filtrate them through something. What are we filtrating them through? Kingdom concepts, kingdom precepts, the original thoughts of the father. And then that way we can serve because those, those works are dead. Those works are dead from the soul are dead. They're severed because we're now operating on our spirit. Okay. So that's that conscious. That's that first one. So what are we doing to overcome an obstacle, to overcome a circumstance? Well, we deciphering the thoughts. First of all, we, we change our viewpoint on what it is that's in front of us. And then we rightly divide the word of truth saying, what does the word say about this? Not listening to my soul, listening to my spirit. How do you want me to do this? My sheep know my voice. They know the voice of the Holy Spirit because they are continuing in the next uh, function of the spirit is fellowship, a continuous fellowship. Okay. Fellowship. Let's look at some scriptures on this. This is we have to be in fellowship with our spirit. We have to continually we have to have a relationship. Not a one side relationship, because the spirit is always wanting to pour into us, wanting to pour into us. It's if we allow it or we reject it. So when we talk about fellowship, it's a continuous relationship. It takes maintenance. You have to renew it every day. You have to make sure that I'm hearing from that. Because again, how long have you been listening to the soul? How long have you been listening to the soulish man? Okay. So Yonan 4, 19 and 24. Well, 19 through 24. I want to get the full concept of what the scripture is saying. So, sir, the woman said, you must be a prophet. Asking you sure. So tell me, why is it that the Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place of worship? While we Samaritans claim it is here at Mount Gizrim, Gerizim, where our ancestors worship. And Yeshua replied, Believe me, dear woman, the time is coming when it will no longer matter whether you worship the Father on this mountain or in Jerusalem. You Samaritans know very little about one, the one you worship, while we you, uh, Jews, uh, uh, Yehudites, know all about him, for salvation comes through. Jerusalem or use Jews, uh, but the time is coming. Indeed, it's here and now when true worshipers will worship the father in spirit and in truth. The father is looking for those who will worship him in that way for Elohim is spirit. So those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. What's important about this particular scripture is the, the Yeshua was telling them, you think that you have to worship in this place 
or you think you got to worship in this place. When I'm trying to tell you that it's already in you, that what you're trying to worship and the things that, you know, what you're trying to get across is already inside of you, meaning that it's not a particular place that you have to go to worship. That's man made laws and religion and things like that. No, the father saying the Holy Spirit was given to you. He's in you, but you got to listen to him. And if you are going to be in fellowship with me, you got to do it through the spirit because the spirit. Matter of fact, let's go to this one. Why is that? The spirit is in constant communication with the father because it searches the innermost thoughts. Let's talk about intuition. The intuition. So it's conscious, meaning we got to decipher the thoughts. We got to be able to decipher the thoughts from the spirit and the soulish man. The fellowship, we got to be able to um, have a constant communication with the spirit so that when we uh, come into an obstacle, uh, we're able to listen to the Holy Spirit. We're able to be led. We're able to be guided by the Holy Spirit so we can overcome these things. And then our intuition. Let's go to that one. Intuition. So our intuition and Corinthian Olive 2 and 11 tells us no one can know a person's thought except the person's own spirit. And no one can know Elohim's thoughts except Elohim's own spirit. All right. Next one. Uh, Corinthian Aleph 2, 9 through 12. But at it, as it is written, eyes have not seen, nor ears have heard, nor have entered into the heart of man, to the belief system of man, that things which Elohim has prepared for those who love him. But El has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of Elohim. For what man knows the things of man except the spirit of man, which is in him. The Holy Spirit is in us. Even so, no one knows the things of Elohim except the spirit of Elohim. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit of whom it is from Elohim, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by Elohim. How long have the soul been dominating you? Your soul is standing in the way of you overcoming your circumstances. The spirit knows because he searched the innermost parts of the father, even the thoughts concerning you. And with that being said, in order to get our purpose, in order to get the vision, in order to get our mandate as kingdom ambassadors, we have to go back and go to the design, the father, uh, the, man, the manufacturer to get the intent, the purpose of what he designed us to do. And it's through the spirit. When Yeshua left this earth, he said, I'm leaving a helper. The things that, that, that I've done, the things that I have conquered, the things that I have overcome, you're going to do them and you're going to do even more greater works than I have done because now you're going to have the Holy Spirit teaching you, leading you, guiding you so that this stuff in this world, man chasing out the money, out the things when the father is saying, chase the Holy Spirit down, listen to him. I gave him all the instructions from you. He's the governor in the earth, but you got to be in communication. You got to be in fellowship. You got to understand the thoughts that I think I have to decipher them to make sure that they're not from the soulish man, but they're from the spirit. And by way of me doing that, then now I operate as a kingdom citizen. And guess what? Seek first the kingdom of heaven and all of those things that you've been chasing down. Don't forget your, your mission in the earth. We do a citizenship. All those things that you've been chasing down, you've let the world and the culture of the world win you. I'm trying to win new territory. You letting the territory dominate you. <laughs> I've given you everything that you need to succeed in overcoming and gaining new territory for the kingdom of heaven. You're supposed to be dominating. So again, believers, and this is ending on us, time ending, is that we cannot let those circumstances dominate us. Okay? 
we have to be in fellowship with our spirit and listen and lean on, uh, not on our own understanding, not our that soulish man, but we have to acknowledge the Father in all our ways, which means we have to acknowledge the spirit. Okay? So, um, if this is you and you're wanting to uproot some things that's causing you to see out of purpose, to see out of the vision that the Father gave you, to um, misuse your benefits, miseducation of your benefits in the kingdom. The scripture tells us to repent. We have to change the way that we think. And how do we change the way we think? We have to start digging up those thoughts. Every thought has to be taken up captive. Not, not one needs to be without subjection. Okay? Everything has to be taken up because it has to be subjected to the word. It has to be subjected to the covenant laws that govern the kingdom of heaven to make sure that it's, it's not out of darkness. Because the father can't operate out of that. He can't bless you in your mess. He can't bless you if you're confused. You don't know which way you want to go. Um, so that's what we have to teach today. And um, we wanted to definitely go through Yeshua. He's the blueprint, the example uh, of what it looks like to operate out of the spirit. And we didn't have enough time to go through that today, but we, we maybe will. So with that being said, thank you, ambassadors. We want you to be a part of this ministry. If this ministry is continually uh, helping you, giving you tools to dominate the earth. Uh, this is the perfect place to sow into. This is the perfect place to be a part of. And we want you here. So with that being said, Shalom. Peace. Empowerment of Faith Kingdom Center for Ambassadors has a mobile app available to you. That's right. It's the Church by Ministry One app available in your Play Store. Simply download the app, open it up, then type in Empowerment of Faith Kingdom Center for Ambassadors in order to find the ministry. Be sure to allow the application to send you notifications. And then there's a profile option that gives the ministry information about you. And it's all available in the Church by Ministry One app. Download that from your Play Store today and be in touch with Empowerment of Faith wherever you go.